Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alexis. I am a board certified dermatologist and today we're going to be diving into face mapping, but we're taking a more dermatologic approach to face mapping. Face mapping in general has been looking at the face and acne in a certain area and determining what it is actually caused by. This is what differential diagnosis is for people in medicine. And there are a lot of areas on the face that can appear to be acne or acne mimickers, and they need to be treated completely different than acne. So a lot of times someone is at home and treating what they think is acne, and it's actually not acne or it's a subvariant of acne that doesn't really respond to the traditional types of medication. Today I'm going to walk you through some of the common acne mimickers and subvariants of acne that don't typically respond to the benzoyl peroxides and the salicylic acids that you find over the counter. So if you've been frustrated treating your acne, you may not actually have acne. And we're gonna go through some of those common mimickers. The first one we're gonna review is when you have teeny tiny little bumps all over the forehead, especially if it's in the temple region. This is actually called pomade acne, and it can come from using a certain cosmetic products that you use to manage your hair or other greasy hair products. It doesn't just have to be hair products though. Just having your hair in your face all the time can cause irritation, which can lead to these teeny tiny little bumps. So of course, the easiest way to prevent pomade acne would be to say, stop using the products. I find this to be extremely unrealistic and it's not something that I would ever tell my patients. It's not, also not something that I plan on personally doing. So how do we combat pomade acne if we have it? Well, the way that you can do it is by every night, make sure that you're cleansing your skin thoroughly. And when you cleanse your face, make sure that you're also including getting all of the product out of your edges. The other thing that you can do is when you're picking products, look for things that are oil-free so that you can make sure that you can still get the look you want without causing your pores to get clogged. So how do you know if you have pomade acne? Well, if you've got teeny tiny little bumps that are what we call monomorphic, meaning that they all look the same and they're like closed comedones is what we call them. So they just look like flesh colored bumps all over the forehead. You may have pomade acne. If you're looking at something that's on the forehead, almost everyone will say, oh, that's acne. But the truth is teeny tiny little bumps are not always acne. It's also possible that you have something called pitorosporum folliculitis, which is not acne at all. Pitorosporum folliculitis or maladasia folliculitis, also known as fungal acne. There is no such thing as fungal acne. It is called pitorosporum folliculitis, which is an inflamed follicle that is resulting from pitorosporum, which comes from Malazazia furfur. So very cute little name, but not cute when you have it on your forehead. So what you want to do is make sure that you're using an antifungal instead of an antibacterial to get rid of a condition like that. Things like ketoconazole, which are antifungals. And things that typically will be treated for acne, like benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid, don't really do much to pitorosporum folliculitis. Another really common one that can be found all over the forehead and actually anywhere on the body that has a lot of sebaceous glands or sebum is sebaceous hyperplasia. And it can show up in appearance as oil glands. So multiple oil glands all over the face and they just look like little papules. Inside of those oil glands is something called sebum or what people more commonly refer to as oil that some may perceive to be an acne mimicker. And you can treat this by going into your doctor's office because there's a machine that we can use to actually get rid of those little oil pockets. There's not a lot that you can do topically for it, but adapalene has shown to have some effect on those oil pockets. Sebaceous hyperplasia on someone with lighter skin can actually look a little bit yellow in color because again, it's actually oil that's there on the forehead. But in darker skin tones, the oil is not always so prevalent and it may just look flesh colored. Okay, so moving down the face, when you have little papules in between your brows, it can commonly be a mimicker of acne, but it's not actually acne that's happening. That usually happens from grooming your brows. So if you've had a recent wax, threading, plucking, shaving, it can all cause little papules between your brows and it's not acne. It's simply irritation from whatever your grooming practice was. So if you were using a blade for a shaver, if it wasn't properly cleansed, it can cause this to happen. If you had wax, 
It could cause irritation, so little papules will show up. The best way to fix this type of thing is just using like a gentle cleanser, something fragrance-free, and you can just clear that area with it and that should be gone in a couple of days. But you may notice that it continues to happen if you continue to groom your hair in the same way that caused it to begin. As we continue to move down the face, you may notice some bumps around your eyes. Those can be mistaken as acne as well. Commonly, there's something called milia. Milia are actually just keratin-filled cysts, and they can easily be extracted either in a dermatologist office or with a medical esthetician. A super common cause of milia is using the wrong skincare products. So if you're using something that's really occlusive around the eyes and you're prone to milia, you're just further clogging your pores. Another common culprit is using oils around your eyes. And even those double cleansers, if you put on that first layer of like micellar water and then you don't follow it up with a foamy cleanser, you can undoubtedly be actually clogging your pores. Really comedogenic makeup, meaning that it clogs the pores, can also cause milia. So on lighter skin patients, it's going to be more of like a pearly white kind of color that's really small, very singular little bumps underneath the eyes. On someone with a darker skin tone, it's just going to look more like a fleshed colored bump. Then again, milia can occur even on little babies. So if the skin is actually folding over on itself, it's causing that keratin to get trapped inside and that can cause milia. Other things that can be found around the eyes are like seringomas or hydrocystomas. Those types of growths can appear like little papules. Some can even be bluish in color. Don't even bother trying to treat those. Please don't put anything on them. Do not squeeze them. You don't want to create scarring. You can't get rid of those by doing anything at home and you do need to go see a dermatologist for treatment. Okay, so let's keep going. Moving down the face, so papule and pustules on the nose, these can commonly be mistaken and just written off as acne, but a lot of times it's actually rosacea. So in a lighter skin patient, it may look like red papules and bumps on the nose and it can include like little fine blood vessels around the face and the cheeks as well. That is most likely rosacea. Um, but if you have comedones, it's definitely acne. There are no comedones in rosacea unless it is a mixed picture of both acne and rosacea. But if you just see pustules on the nose and it's not responding to acne medication, you may indeed have rosacea. There's lots of different triggers for rosacea and there's a whole other video on rosacea and rosacea triggers. But know that if you have a lot of papules on your nose and it's just not responding to your traditional acne medication, you may indeed be dealing with rosacea. Things that you can try over the counter for rosacea would be using a sulfur-based cleanser or using products by La Roche-Posay. They have a whole tolerant line for rosacea-like products. You can also use niacinamide. It's really good for calming down the inflammation that's associated with rosacea. And azelaic acid is a fantastic product for rosacea. There are stronger strains that can actually be prescribed, but if you wanted to start with something over the counter, I would recommend like the Inky or the Ordinary because they're not expensive and they are very good strength and pure azelaic acid that you would be putting on the area. So if you're not really sure if you have rosacea, I'm just going to quickly run through some triggers. If you find that those bumps or papules and pustules on the nose are worse after drinking alcohol, after exercising because heat can induce them, after having spicy foods or drinking a lot of very hot and spicy foods. If they're triggered by stress, that's kind of a difficult one because isn't all acne worsened by stress? But those are things that are commonly associated with rosacea. And I forgot chocolate. Chocolate can also cause your rosacea papules to flare up. So if you notice that those papules and pustules on the nose are indeed worse after any of those triggers, you may actually have rosacea, especially if it's in association with any red broken blood vessels on the face. On my darker skin patients, those blood vessels are not always so obvious. So really paying attention to your triggers and your flares can help you significantly kind of determine whether you have more of an acne picture or a rosacea picture. If those comedones are not present and you've got the papules and pustules that are worsened by triggers that we mentioned, it's probably rosacea. And if treating it over the counter with products like azelaic acid or the La Roche-Posay tolerant line that we discussed, you want to go in and see your dermatologist. This is something that can be treated 
Um, if it cannot be cured, they can definitely be treated so that no one else knows you have it but you. A lot of acne that appears on your cheeks is actually due more to lifestyle factors. So if you are someone who wears a lot of comedogenic, meaning poor clogging makeup, this could be a cause, a culprit for those papules and pustules that you're seeing on your cheek. Or if you're someone that's always having their cell phone up against their face and not thoroughly cleaning their cell phone often, even your pillowcase can be a culprit. So if you're not turning over your pillowcase often enough, if you're not washing your pillowcase often enough, or if you sleep with a lot of skincare products or you're a heavy sweater, all of that can build up on your pillow and all night long you're seeping it back into your skin. That can definitely be a culprit. Dairy is a big one. So a lot of cystic papules and pustules on the cheek has been linked to dairy. So your milk, especially your skim milk, Cheese, whey protein, especially if you're doing those whey protein bars, can all lead to cystic acne on the cheeks. I'm not telling you that you can never have ice cream again, but if you notice that you get flares on your cheeks after that, you may want to kind of back down because you know that that dairy is causing that to happen. So something that you got from the doctor can actually be causing the acne on your face. So if you're using a lot of steroids, specifically fluorinated topical steroids that you may have been using to treat another condition, let's say you had eczema or you had a rash that you were given a steroid cream for and you got rid of the rash, but you now notice some papules and pustules on the cheek, you have steroid induced acne. And that is something that can be difficult to treat. The number one way to treat steroid induced acne is of course by stopping the steroid, but your skin usually doesn't like that and responds with a even greater response of that acne or those papules and pustules that are there. So you really need to slowly wean yourself off and talk to your doctor about transitioning to a different type of medicine. Another really common cause of steroid induced acne on the cheeks comes from someone who is trying to bulk up. They're actually taking steroids. So someone who is a heavy bodybuilder or someone who is into the fitness industry may indeed get a lot of acne on their face because they have taken steroids. And of course, the best way to fix that would be obviously to stop the steroids. Next super common cause of what is commonly perceived to be acne, but is undoubtedly not, is perioral dermatitis. So little bumps all around the mouth. They can be red, but again, that redness may not be so obvious on someone with a darker skin tone. And it actually spares what's called the vermilion border. So it will spare the outline of your lips and it will kind of be like this halo of bumps all around the mouth. This is super common in women. And there's a common culprit for this, which is using certain makeup products. So if you are someone who loves to switch up your beauty products or you're using comedogenic makeup, so things that are clogging your pores, you may notice this happening around the mouth. So when makeup is the cause, the common ingredients that are the culprit can be lanolin, something called isopropyl myristate or sodium lauryl sulfate, also known as SLS, also oleic acids or petrolatum can be causing this problem. So I would look on your makeup and look for any of those ingredients to be there. An easier way to do it is to just buy makeup that is not comedogenic. But if you do have a skin condition, your best bet is to just avoid makeup, especially in that area. I know it's easier said than done. With perioral dermatitis, the best thing that you could do is nothing for a little bit and just kind of let it dry out. One of the main causes of perioral dermatitis is using fluorinated products. So whether or not that's fluorinated toothpaste, or if you were giving a steroid that is fluorinated for another condition and you were putting it around this area, this can undoubtedly make perioral dermatitis worse. It's tricky because it can make it better in the beginning and then worse as you continue to use it. So fluorinated toothpaste, I would definitely cut out. Also, toothpaste that has SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate can be a culprit. This is yet another reason to never put toothpaste on your face. Another condition that can show up around the mouth is something called candida or candidiasis. So you can actually get a buildup of yeast around your mouth. This can happen from just sleeping. If you're someone who does a lot of drooling in your sleep, this yeast can build up over the night and it can cause little papules that can be red or more flesh colored around the mouth. So again, antibacterial um, type of acne medications aren't gonna do much for this. You're gonna need an antifungal medication. And if you're not seeing quick and rapid improvement, this is one that I would get into the dermatologist very quickly 
even if it's just via telemedicine to treat because it can progress and can become quite painful. So acne around the jawline can actually be, again, caused by some lifestyle type of things. If you're someone who finds yourself doing this all day, you're always pondering or thinking with your hand on your face, resting on your jaw, that can undoubtedly cause acne. It can also cause irritant dermatitis from whatever it is that you have on your hand. So that's something to be aware of. It's trying to keep your hands off of your face. But very commonly, especially in this U-shaped pattern, you can have hormonal acne. This can be a pretty tough one to treat. And so I would definitely get into the dermatologist, whether in person or via telederm, for hormonal type of acne. This can also be linked to something like PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome. If you can't get into your dermatologist, I would try and keep an acne journal or an acne diary because you can usually kind of pinpoint and link your hormonal acne. It usually has a cyclical type of pattern. You can really tailor your treatments to your hormones, and that can really help you to get on top of hormonal acne. So if a week or two before your period, you know that you get really bad flares, try your best to eat a high anti-inflammatory diet. Try and do like a charcoal mask so that you can help to clarify your pores right before you know those flares usually happen to you. There's definitely ways that you can get in front of your hormonal acne to make a much easier picture for yourself. And the best way to do that is really to just take out like an acne journal or an acne planner and track what is going on with your skin and when it's happening. If you get in front of your acne, it will make a huge difference. So a lot of acne that occurs on the chin can again be from touching your chin all the time, resting your hand there. So a lot of my athletes will get acne on the chin and that usually comes from using a chin strap. A lot of the bacteria and the sweat kind of pull into that chin strap. And if it's not being cleansed properly, every time you go out there and play, you're reintroducing that bacteria into the skin. So I would definitely make sure that you're cleaning your equipment properly and you will probably need to do some type of acne treatment uh, specifically for your skin. Things like adapalene and benzoyl peroxide can be really helpful in chin strap acne. Dairy really likes to cause flares on the chin too, so that's another one to look for. So on the neck and the beard area, you can get something called pseudofolliculitis barbae. This is when your hair that grows in this area actually curls back in and causes a form body-like reaction to the skin. This results in papules and pustules and what feels like ingrown hairs. It can be super irritating and uncomfortable to deal with. And I would recommend to see your dermatologist for this one as well. Things that you can do at home would be using like a benzoyl peroxide type of wash. Unless you're prone to hyperpigmentation, then I would go with more of a sulfur-based cleanser. And you can even do like a sulfur-based mask that really helps with pseudofolliculitis barbae. Laser treatments are a great one for any of patients that are dealing with this because if you get rid of the hair, you're getting rid of that problem with the hair actually coming and curling back in. A lot of patients will really need to see a dermatologist to treat this though because it's treated very well with different topical medications. All right, guys, so I hope that that helped you learn some of the subvariants of acne and the acne mimickers and where they show up on the face. If the over-the-counter products that I recommended to you are not helping, please come in and see your dermatologist. Or you can even do a teledermatology visit. These conditions are easily treated and the psychological impact they can make and the frustration you could go through in trying to treat them can be completely mitigated by just getting on the right treatment program. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm doing weekly videos on dermatologic conditions, tips and tricks, and also product reviews. Until next time, be well.